The movie begins with a baby stationed inside a car parked in front of a bank. Occupying the vehicle alongside them are three individuals, Jason, the eldest member, his spouse, Monica, who goes by the name Darling, and another person named Buddy, often referred to as Grief. These three individuals venture into the bank to pilfer money, while the baby remains stationed outside as the lookout. After a successful bank robbery, they return to the baby's car, only to discover that the police are in hot pursuit. A high-speed chase ensues, with the baby's exceptional driving abilities repeatedly aiding in their illusion of pursuing law enforcement. Time and again, Baby manages to shake off the police, guiding the crew back to Doc's hidden location. Doc expresses satisfaction at the successful heist and proceeds to distribute the loot among the participants, including the Baby. Buddy questions why Baby deserves a share when their sole responsibility was driving the getaway car. Nevertheless, Doc emphasizes the critical nature of the baby's role in ensuring the group's escape. Despite these explanations, Buddy remains dissatisfied and mocks the baby for their perpetual use of earphones and sunglasses, as well as their reticence. Buddy contends that the baby has not accomplished much in life. Yet, when the baby removes their sunglasses, another pair is revealed underneath, leading to laughter among the crew, highlighting the baby's enigmatic nature. Before parting ways, Doc confides in the baby and allocates their share of the spoils. This transaction carries significant importance, as it offsets the considerable debt baby owes to Doc due to their prior involvement with the stolen vehicle and its concealed money. At first, the baby talks to a Doc and learns that doing one last task will clear his debt and set him free. The baby agrees, and the Doc gives him money. The baby pays off his debt and starts taking care of someone who thinks of him as a father. The baby also begins recording things and making music from the recordings. He often visits a cafe where a girl named Deborah works, and they seem to like each other. Time goes on, and the baby gets a call from the doc for a new mission. The baby meets the doc and new people, including a guy named Leon or Batches. They make fun of the baby's fashion and ask about the music he listens to due to his tinnitus. The group discusses a bank robbery plan and successfully robs the bank, but they face a shooter and police chase afterward. Things get more dangerous, but the baby prevents any killing. They change cars and make it back to their hideout but realize one member is missing. Batches admits to killing him to avoid getting caught. Despite being shocked, the baby moves on because this is his final job. They split the stolen money, and the doc asks the baby to hide the body in a car trunk before parting ways. The baby is declared free. He starts dating Deborah and becomes a pizza delivery boy. His life takes a new direction. One day, he meets a doc from his criminal past who asks about his well-being and believes the baby brought luck. When baby was collaborating with the gang leader, everything flowed effortlessly. However, things have taken a downturn lately, and none of their operations are going smoothly. This is why I'm urging you to rejoin our efforts, and it's in your best interest too. I understand you're financially strapped, doing odd jobs to make ends meet, so team up with us. In a few days, you'll see your financial situation improve because I won't be taking a share of your earnings anymore. Once you've accumulated enough wealth, you can leave this line of work. But if Baby declines to cooperate, the gang leader delivers a stern ultimatum. He had been trying to be reasonable, but now, he threatens to take away everything dear to Baby, starting with Deborah. You're well aware of what he's capable of. Hence, it's crucial for you to come back and work with us. Things will start to improve soon. Frightened by these words, Baby reluctantly agrees to rejoin. The following day, Baby accompanies the gang leader to a post office bank, with the gang leader's nephew also in the car. The gang leader instructs Baby to enter with his nephew and scout the post office meticulously. Baby is tasked with identifying camera placements and noting the number of security guards. After receiving these instructions, Baby enters the post office with the gang leader's nephew. Inside, Baby observes everything carefully. While doing so, he notices the gang leader's nephew engaging in conversation with a woman. The woman offers a small candy to the child and speaks to him more warmly than she did to Baby. Baby leaves the post office with the nephew and shares this information with the gang leader. Later, they all convene at the gang leader's hideout, where they encounter formidable and audacious individuals. The gang leader begins to reveal that he has obtained crucial information about a substantial amount of money stored in the post office. They decide to carry out a heist there, but they lack the necessary weapons. The gang leader contacts a weapons dealer to procure guns. That night, they gather near the weapons dealer, but things take a dark turn. When the dealer presents the guns, the gang members open fire, causing chaos and eliminating the dealer and his associates. 
However, this action leaves the gang members facing the wrath of the dealer's allies, who question why they resorted to such violence. The gang explains that one of the dealer's associates was an undercover policeman, and if they hadn't acted swiftly, they would have all ended up behind bars. Now, tensions rise, but the gang leader orders the driver to stop the car near a cafe. This cafe happens to be Deborah's workplace, but Baby is apprehensive about stopping there, knowing that the gang leader can be unpredictable and might open fire. The gang leader Bats insists on stopping at the cafe, and the four of them enter. When Deborah comes to take their order, Baby avoids making eye contact. However, Deborah recognizes Baby and discreetly withdraws. After their meal, the gang leader reaches for his gun, intending to harm Deborah, but Baby intervenes and settles the bill himself. When Deborah picks up the bill, she realizes that Baby had called her to meet up the previous day. The four individuals then return to the gang leader Doc, who is furious and cancels the robbery plan, as many of the people they eliminated were connected to him. This infuriates the gang members, who argue that they've put in significant effort for the heist and can't abandon it. Most of them express their determination to proceed with the robbery, except for Baby, who remains silent. The gang leader understands Baby's unspoken stance, and they decide to go through with the heist the following morning, opting to spend the night where they are. As nightfall descended, Baby ignited his car's engine, preparing to depart from his current location. His destination was a rendezvous with Deborah, a meeting he had personally arranged with her. The intention was clear, to escape alongside Deborah. However, just as Baby was on the verge of leaving, he found himself confronted by the Baches, who initiated an interrogation. Soon after, Baches arrived on the scene, clutching a tape recorder belonging to Baby. Baches, eyeing the recorder, queried with suspicion, are you acting as a police informant? Why were you recording our conversations? In response, Baby attempted to allay their concerns by explaining that recording conversations was his hobby, a precursor to his music creation. He claimed to possess numerous such recordings at home. To Baches and the Bats's astonishment, their skepticism deepened. The immediate impulse was to escort Baby home, but his unyielding refusal prompted Baches to resort to more drastic measures, rendering Baby unconscious. Subsequently, they transported him back to his residence, securing all the cassettes in his possession. A significant revelation unfolded when they played one of the tapes, revealing a familiar voice. This discovery alarmed the doc, who promptly dissociated Baby from the mission and summoned a replacement driver. Yet, Baby understood that departing from the mission prematurely would seal not only his fate but also that of Deborah and Joe. To ensure their survival, Baby asserted his unwavering commitment to the mission. All parties concurred, and the following day, they converged at the post office. Inside, the trio proceeded, leaving Baby to maintain his vigil outside. It was during this moment that Baby spotted a woman who had previously given toffee to Doc's nephew. He recognized the danger she faced if she entered the post office. Urgently, he signaled for her to flee, which she did, returning later with a police officer. This prompted a firefight outside, and after seating themselves in the car, Baby was tasked with driving it. Yet, his hesitation was palpable, signaling an underlying thought process. After a moment of contemplation, Baby abruptly initiated the car's engine, but numerous barriers loomed ahead. Colliding with them, sharp protrusions pierced his body, resulting in his demise. At this moment, the true nature of Baby's plan came to light, orchestrating the elimination of those who held him captive, recognizing that his freedom hinged on their demise. The police swiftly arrived, sparking Buddy's anger toward Baby. Escaping the scene, Baby began a frantic run, pursued by Darling and the police officers, with gunfire echoing in the background. Eventually, Darling and Buddy followed suit, fleeing from the pursuing police officers. It was during this tumultuous pursuit that Baby reappeared in another vehicle. With lightning speed, Baby caught up to his car, dispatching Darling and Buddy with lethal shots to their heads before his own vehicle met a tragic accident. Simultaneously, the police officers opened fire. In the aftermath, Baby collected his ill-gotten gains and made a hasty escape. His journey led him to the old man, Joe, he takes care of the only family he has, to whom he provided financial assistance before leaving her near an elderly care facility. Subsequently, he reached Deborah, who had been waiting, harboring intentions of vengeance for her wife's death at the hands of Darling. A tense standoff ensued. Amidst their conversation, Baby suddenly shot Buddy, injuring him, and Baby and Deborah fled the scene. Reaching the dock, Baby conveyed his intent to depart for distant lands but expressed a strong desire to retain the cassettes housing his memories. 
Doc's initial anger towards Baby was palpable, accusing him of ruining everything. Yet, Baby persisted in seeking Doc's help. Deborah joined in the plea, leading Doc to realize their intention to embark on a new life together. Consequently, Doc agreed to assist them, imparting valuable advice. He stressed the urgency of leaving the country to avoid persistent trouble. With this newfound guidance, the group began their departure. However, as they left, they encountered gun dealers who launched an attack. Doc intervened to fend off the attackers, urging Baby and Deborah to escape. During their flight, they came across a police car containing an enraged body, leading to Doc's demise and Baby's voluntary surrender to the awaiting police officers. Subsequently, legal proceedings were initiated against Baby, with numerous individuals testifying in his favor, asserting his innocence in any criminal activities. Several people even provided character references, notably the woman from the post office who had once saved his life. As a result, Baby received a relatively light five-year sentence, which concluded swiftly, leading to his release from prison. Upon his release, Deborah awaited him, marking the conclusion of their tumultuous journey.